Hey, hey. Joshua Elbaum here. And as always, this is the People's Champ Podcast. Hello, everyone. Today we have a special guest, Stuart Douglas. You want to say hi, Stu? What's up, everyone? <laughs> um, Stu right now is in Israel, uh, Naharia, Israel. Um, and w- wanted to give him a quick call, uh, especially with myself having, you know, Israeli roots. Uh, Stu's been playing over in Israel for two years. So I want to pick his brain real quick. Uh, and that's some questions about his time in Israel. You ready for this? Hell yeah. All right, let's go. Yalla. Yalla. Uh, yalla. Um, Stu, let's start off with favorite Israeli food. Favorite Israeli food. Uh, there's a lot of Israeli food that I really like. Um, but I really like the Israeli breakfast. And one of my favorite dishes is the shakshuka. It's like a tomato-based um, egg dish that's served in a skillet, cooked in a skillet, and served hot in a skillet. You can make it spicy, which I like. You can put uh, hummus and uh, tahini on there and, and all sorts of different stuff. Um, and it's super easy to make at home as well. You know, it's not like making some of these meat dishes or making homemade hummus. It's not um, quite like that. So it's nice to do at home and even have out. I uh, would like nice Israeli bread dip. Yeah. It's can't really go wrong with it. It's hard to screw up. Uh, it's interesting. I'm not, I'm not a huge fan of shakshuka. I got to admit. Yeah, I'm gonna not make a... you one one of these days. Uh, you, you, I'll, uh, I'll turn you. Nice. I'm a, if you, if you're a fan of, you know, oh, you know, sunny side up, runny eggs. I think you'll love shakshuka. You're just a scrambled um, fan. Is that it? I, I'm, a, I'm a scrambled guy. I have to admit, I, I like my eggs dry. It's very are odd, you, but let me, let me. Are you cooking them on high heat? What? Oh, uh, no, no, I, I, I switch. I've switched up. I've had, I've tried all of them, like the over easy, over medium, the, and none of them, none of them really do it for me. I have to do scrambled every single time. But you're drying them out. This is a disappointment, Josh. We're going to have to, we're going to have to fix this when I get home. I'm willing, I'm willing to try. I'm willing to try anything. <laughs> do you think, if you think your, your, your way of making eggs will, uh, <laughs> well, everything I do is superior. So yeah. <laughs> Understandable. Yeah. Understandable. <laughs> um, leading into worst Israeli food, which for me would probably be shakshuka. <laughs> See, that's, don't even, okay. I'm going to bypass that. Worst Israeli food. Um, eggplant. They really try and push eggplant on you here. And I mean, they can suffocate it in different sauces and stuff and make it okay, but it's just not great. I, I think you have to be a pretty good cook, a pretty good chef to really give it a lot of flavor. That's one. Another one is za'atar, which is this seasoning, this green seasoning. I don't even know what's in it. I can barely pronounce it, but they put it on pita. Um, and just ruin pita. I mean, you just be, leave, basically just leave pita alone. It's delicious as it is. And they put it all over it. Not all the time, but um, enough to where I just don't even want to look at it. Yeah, I can, uh, I can attest that. I think the pita and hummus in Israel is just superior to any other pita and hummus you can get. Um, so you really don't need any, you don't need to add um, anything when you eat hummus in Israel. So I, I can only imagine what people are throwing on there. No, not much. And here, I mean, you just yeah. eat bowls of hummus. You just go to a hummus restaurant you can get endless bowls of hummus. There's a couple around here. It's magnificent. And nice. yeah, you, you really can't, that's hard to screw up as well. What, what's up with the eggplant though? Is that, I mean, is that like more of like a, a meat substitute? Cause you guys can't mix dairy you know, dairy with meat? I don't think so. I think, I mean, they have this sandwich shop here and one of the toppings you can put on is this crispy uh, pan fried eggplant. And it's not even good. 
uh, it gets like mushy after it like sits out for a little bit. I don't know. It's, it's weird. They just use it for a lot of things. I think just because it's available. Uh, don't ask me. I, I, I've quit asking and tr- quit trying to figure out what they're thinking of that. <laughs> nice. Um, <laughs> all right. Th- no, third question. Best Israeli city to visit. Best Israeli city to visit. I mean, Tel Aviv is, is Tel Aviv. It's a big bustling city with far too many people in it. Um, I, it's fun to go every once in a while, but you know, it gets expensive and I look at me, I sound really old saying all this stuff, but it's just a lot of people to deal with all the time. I mean, it can be fun. You can find your spots, but you know, if you want to see like, the main areas you want to go to the beach, the beaches can be overwhelming with people. Um, but it's great. You got all the boardwalk, you got certain areas. Um, there's up and coming areas that you can go find out. I really like Jaffa. That area is really cool. A lot of good food, um, a lot of good places to live and walk around. So that's nice. But I think Jerusalem is also a great city. It gets a, you know, it's not, it's not as exciting, but it's got, Definitely great markets, great restaurants. Our favorite restaurant, me and my wife's favorite restaurant, is in Jerusalem. Um, it's a good place to visit. The markets are really cool to go at night, and it's not crazy busy. I mean, everything shuts down on the weekend during Shabbat. That you know that, that that's usually open in Tel Aviv. So it's just kind of a different vibe. But both of them, however, however you're feeling that day, uh, they both have their their pros and cons. Yeah, I tell people that, you know, Tel Aviv is basically like the New York, you know, if New York was on the beach like that, you know, that's that's essentially what Tel Aviv is in Israel. It's like the New York City. Um, I think Jerusalem definitely has the like you said, like more of the culture, um, more of the history. Yep. Um, Yeah, for sure. All the tours go through there. Yeah. Straight from the airport, straight to Jerusalem. Yeah. Yeah. And where you can find more authentic restaurants. So. Um, what's up? I know a big, uh, big vacation destination is up north. Was it Elot? Down south. Is that the, oh, that's down south. Oh, okay. Yeah. What's why? Why do people go down there? Is that I couldn't tell you. It's I don't know. Just resorts. It's like to get away from Israel to act like you're going somewhere. It's like going to Florida, but like it's just a three hour drive from Tel Aviv or maybe four hours. I don't know it. I can't really make too much sense of it. I mean, it gets warm. It's like in the middle of the desert, basically. Um, okay. Or dry land. Mm-hmm. I, I, I really can't figure that out either. But yeah, a lot of people go for vacations and during the summer. I mean, it's like a little party destination. So I know kids like to go there, you know, when they're in the army or just getting out of the army. Um I've yet to figure that out as well. There's a lot of things that I've yet to figure out <laughs> with Israel in my years here. Um, yeah, understandable. Yeah, I'm definitely exactly. understandable. But yeah, I mean, we, every place has that. Yeah, for sure. Um, question number four, funniest Hebrew word or expression? There's a lot of stuff and I don't know enough. I, I really don't know enough Hebrew. I should. Um, but the one thing that's always funny to me is uh, yalla, which means let's go basically. <laughs> well, you can say it for a lot of things. You say like, if you're saying goodbye, you can say like to pump up your team, everyone says yalla or like yalla, let's go, let's do this drill or, you know, start practice. Um, and then you can say, when you're saying goodbye to someone, you say yalla bye. And then, <laughs> okay. So it's really confusing me. And it said, they say it a lot so that I, I just, be obnoxious and I mock my teammates with it. Um, <laughs> and I'm super funny and, but I don't know why I've always, it's so generic and, and so common, but I still find it funny. You can, yeah, you, I'm pretty sure you can use that in any context and someone will like, you'll sound like you're making sense. Yeah, no, uh, for sure. You just you kind of yell and then just kind of walk away and you can just pass it off. Yeah. The, uh, it's weird too. Cause like, that's uh, probably the most overused or co- word. Um, like I've experienced when I, my, when I was over there, um, but it's actually Arabic. It's like just it's just Israeli slang. It's actually an Arabic word. Well, I mean, as you know, Israelis steal everything from Arabs, <laughs> food, <laughs> words, land. I mean, it doesn't really stop. <laughs> uh, 
to be a territory wars. I mean, the list goes on. It list goes on. Yeah. Um, my, um, what was my pickup line when I was over there? Um, oh, this will be good. Oh, oh, oh yeah. The, uh, I used to always tell, I used to tell, uh, tell all Israeli girls. I'm like, oh yeah, I speak Hebrew, like Medeberet, uh, Ivrit. And then they're like, yeah. And I was like, <laughs> Oh no, no, no! They would ask me if I spoke Hebrew, uh-huh. and I would say, and I would be like, ka, 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 ka. <laughs> "Apparently, apparently, I've yet, I've yet to ever use that line. Maybe I've probably used it upwards of twenty times. Um, when I say ka, 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 I every single time someone laughs. Doesn't matter who they are. Well, maybe because it's kaha. What is it? <laughs> like kaha. Kaha. Oh, kaha. Used- I thought you were supposed to say it like a like a bunch of times in a row. <laughs> no, I think I think that's why they're laughing. I think it's like so ha ha ha. So they're laughing at me. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they're laughing at you. <laughs> they're not laughing with me. No, All right, thanks for that. No, but hey, you you uh, you come off as endearing, and uh, yeah, so that's a, that's also a plus. Great. I could have I could have went the rest of my life thinking I I was just you know I was like the Jerry Seinfeld of you know. Uh, of comedy with yeah. Israeli words, but <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm trying to help you out for the next time you come over here, so it actually is successful. What does it mean? It's like so, 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 or yeah, like so, so. Um, then there's obviously there's other meanings, but I'm pretty sure, yeah, yeah, okay. So, all right, so th- thanks for that. You learn something new every day, huh? <laughs> um, I think. Don't quote me on that, but that's kind of what what, what <laughs> I picked up. Yeah. Okay, okay. Oh, another another phrase I used to mispronounce was um, is it meme and mime? One one means water and one means sex, right? I don't know what sex is, but yeah, mime is is water. Wait, m- mime ending in an M is water. Yeah, but I'm I think not a mime, spell it in Hebrew. Yeah, I, I think my if it ends in N or something, I, I don't know. I, yeah, because I got I, I got called out on that mistake quite a few times. That seems way too um, close. Yeah, it must. It was probably the way I was pronouncing it too. Maybe it was different. But um, all right, question number five: What do you miss the most from back home that you can't get in Israel? It's always go to food. Um, God, there's something. Well, I miss being able to buy basketball shoes. I'll put it out there. Everything over here is expensive. Everything oh, imported. The, tax. the taxes yeah. are are yeah uh a bit much um but there's i think they started to lessen that uh, if you ship things over i don't know that's my dad my dad actually shipped you know we have family friends over there my dad actually bought um i think it might have been kds and shipped them to uh my family friends and it was actually cheaper for them to just have my dad buy it here and ship it halfway across the world, then buying it in Israel, I think. With shipping? Yeah. 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 Like, that's how crazy I think some of the, like, my dad, like, put, not dirt, but he, like, made it look like it was used. So it was it didn't get taxed or something. Yeah, you um, can kind of just, yeah, yeah, for sure. Because if it's new shoes, it's it's definitely going to get slapped with the tax or yeah, something. Yeah, you keep so. it in that box. Yeah, they're, they're scoping out everything. They don't let anything come through. Jeez. Oh yeah. So yeah. Besides besides shoes, what were besides you talking about? Food? Shoes. But food. I mean, you always go to food. You know, I always miss my my fast food spots. I uh, miss good Mexican food. <laughs> I cook way too much Mexican food at home because I can't find it around here. Um, you know, if I want to go to Tel Aviv and spend a lot of money, then I can do it. But it's not always an option. Um, but yeah, like fast food stuff. But really, I've been getting into cooking more at home. And, you know, finding certain ingredients, trying to, to branch out and try new recipes with different vegetables, different seasonings. It's hard to find here. They don't have um, international ingredients as much as, you know, an American grocery store would. I, I mean, even a Walmart has more international <laughs> ingredients than I, the supermarkets here, but the supermarkets here are set up obviously a little different than those big um, kind of box store places. Are, are you on, are you on record saying that, uh, you know, you, you miss Walmart? Is that what you miss the most? <laughs> <laughs> kind of that, that is, I mean, it is, 
if 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 anything else, Walmart embodies what America <laughs> is all about. But no, I do not miss Walmart. I just miss all the options that America always provides yeah. um, on a day to day basis that you have to search out more when you go overseas. Uh, it's understandable. I um I remember when we, I think yeah when we were over there. Um, was wow that was was it back in 2013 um mm-hmm. when we me and you tried to find we finally found like a pe- was it a pizza hut or a papa john's <laughs> yeah which one was it I, I, I think it, yeah i think it was a pizza hut and we were like oh we can finally we found a place that has pepperoni um and yeah pizza hut we no the pizza yeah. was terrible it was awful and we read the fine print and it wasn't even pepperoni. It was like a, a beef shoulder. It was like some awful smoked meat that was like inedible. It's, it is a huge point of frustration for me. Pizza here. I did. They just don't understand it. I don't understand what they don't understand. They put tuna on pizza here. They put no corn on pizza here. <laughs> they don't put enough sauce on it. I mean, not nearly enough. And Jeez. yeah, I mean, I could go on. The pizza places here are just, I don't even know how some of them stay open, to be completely honest with you. <laughs> even the fast food chains are just not great. Although fast food chains, I mean, although I do love Pizza Hut back home in America. That's one one uh, fast food chain I will vouch for always. So you're saying that the... The pizza there doesn't even compare to fast food pizza here back in the States. No. Yeah. I can get, yeah, you can go to the crappiest pizza place in New York and it's better than like, you know, there's obviously good places in Tel Aviv. There has to be, or it'd be just complete insanity. So I can't fully believe that they don't have them in Tel Aviv Um, Mm -hmm. or, you know, in some other random places. But yeah, I mean, like the best pizza, Naria doesn't match up to much of anything back home. Yeah, the uh, I do. I do want to bring this up. Um, I know, uh, you know, for those listening, Stu had a a recent tweet, uh, and Stu's very big on Twitter. Uh, we'll give uh, you want to give your handle a quick shout out. Yeah, you know, SWD underscore three one seven. Simple. All right. Get, definitely give him a follow. He's a, he's a good he's a good person to follow on Twitter. Um, he recently tweeted out something about bacon uh, that got. I think a lot of people upset. Um, it's yeah, too, if you, stupid. If you want to elaborate on that. Yeah. First of all, people reading comprehension is just, I don't understand. It's, you would think it's common sense, like basic math, but it's not. They just get enraged <laughs> with something and they can't even finish half of a, a 30 word sentence. It's amazing. So I said bacon <laughs> is overrated. Um, but obviously I didn't say bacon was bad. I didn't say bacon was the worst meat ever. I just said bacon <laughs> is the most overrated food in our society because it's like what is talked about. I mean, it's up there with pizza, right? I'm trying to think of what would be the, like the most hyped up foods. People like, Oh my God, I love bacon. I love pizza. <laughs> I love Chipotle. You know what I'm saying? So it's up there. It's a top five hyped up. I, I would food. agree with that. And it's just, I mean, you haven't tasted a uh, uh, pork or a steak or some other type of meat that tastes better than bacon. You're going to sit here and tell me that. I'm, I'm going to let you know that I actually did not eat, um, I ate, po- I ate bacon, um, until I was 13 years old. And then I took a seven, I took a seven year hiatus, I oh, think, man. uh, until I, until I got to college, I didn't have bacon or something crazy. Um, and I, I have to disagree with you. Uh, there's no way for the, you know, for forever, how like much longer I'm on this earth that there will be a time where I ever give up bacon. I won't give it up. I mean, I, I, I ate it the day after I tweeted it, but it's just not yeah. as good. I can have, I can find better pork. Give me a pulled pork sandwich. Give me, I mean, a okay, delicious, okay. a delicious steak. 
I mean, even some pork chops, if you can do it right, but the, and that's pushing it. But I'm saying there's other options that are better than bacon. Um, and, oh. and my thing is like, it's a fad. People have just made it like this fad and they jumped on board and wanted to be like, you know, included in the bacon train. And it went off crazy. People wearing bacon t-shirts, <laughs> proclaiming their love for bacon, bacon uh, Instagram accounts and Twitter. I mean, come on, people. This is uh, ridiculous. I, okay, I can I can agree with you on that. The, the hype, there's definitely a there's definitely a hype behind it. Yeah, that it's is, like hype uh, beasts with with shoes or food, like all this <laughs> stuff. Like you like just catch on something and it's like, oh, this is gonna be big. People will like this. Uh, so I want to be included. And then you're like, yeah, 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 bacon's the best. I can't live without it. And then like, you won't eat bacon for six months or something. Like you're just lying to yourself. People be real. I, I will say my, my initial reaction when I read this, when I read your tweet was Stu's just bitter. He's in Israel. He can't get real bacon and he's just bitter. Only thing he's getting is that to that tofurkey bacon. No, they, they don't even have that. I wish they had that. That's the, that's good. I'll eat that with breakfast, but the, I'll eat pork here. And yeah, they're like, oh, you're not really Jewish. I'm like, I mean, no, I like to eat pork quite a bit. Like, I'm, an, I'm an American Jew. I eat whatever I want. Whatever I want. No, I don't. I don't keep the Sabbath. I don't keep kosher. I'm going to. I Oh, I mean, sushi. I can't. They don't even have shrimp over here and kosher. Um, sushi spots. It's it's insanity over here, man. I, I could go what's, off about the food. We. Yeah, I was gonna say what shrimp is. That's from the bottom of the ocean, right? So they yeah, can't. It's, it's a, technically shellfish. It's a bottom feeder. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, any shellfish or like certain types of fish. They have a list somewhere. I don't even know. Where do you get your bacon and your pork? Because I, I know like normal corner supermarkets are not selling selling bacon. No, you go you your, to your Jewish special? your Jewish supermarkets. Are not selling it. You got to go to your Arab supermarkets. And luckily, we have um, a couple by our apartment, and one in particular that's really big. It's got all fresh um, produce. It's really good. It's our favorite place to go. It's cheaper too than the average supermarket. Um, that's where you can get a lot of non-kosher stuff. But the pork is, is with the Russian places. Okay. So the Russians don't give a damn about anything. And they're like, yeah, yeah. No, I mean, we eat pork in Russia, so we're going to eat it here. I really don't care about <laughs> my Judaism or whatever. They don't, they don't really follow along with that. So you go and you, you get, um, you ask for it in English. They barely understand English and they definitely don't understand Hebrew at this Russian <laughs> supermarket I go to. And it's glorious. Just go in and, it's right there. You see it. I mean, it, it, it's spelled out like it sounds like bacon in Hebrew. So I know the um, I can read the read it in Hebrew and say, see that it's bacon. Go up to the counter and be able to, I, you know, a lot of pointing. You know how you go. It's like, oh, uh, yeah. that, that bacon. Yeah. Point. Yeah, of course. Yeah, it's perfect. And then, then yeah, that's nice. I mean, it's all right. So you're not completely deprived of, uh, of pork there. That's no, but you got to go out of your way. You know, like I go to literally four different supermarkets to like get certain foods. I can't just go to one place and get everything I need. That's, that's <laughs> what's uh, upsetting about Israel. <laughs> nice. Um, all right, just to, to, to wrap things up, Stu, thanks for, uh, thanks for joining me. No problem. Um, what, uh, what is your message? I guess wrap this up with, uh, you know, your time in Israel, uh, to all the people listening in terms of, I don't know your uh, overall thoughts. Should people visit? Should you know? Do they have an extra room in your apartment for you know? Are, are you a good host? Or? No, I'm not a good host. <laughs> Although I'm, I'm still waiting for my family to come over, so I'll just I'll keep. <laughs> there's a room for them. I'll keep guilting them until they come over, but I don't know when that's going to happen. But yeah, I mean, visit Israel. Uh, you know, I wanted to write a post about this. You know, people talk about what the media portrays Israel as versus reality. And, you know, both are wrong because yeah, the media gives it stories and it's not like those stories are not real. They, they show what's happening in Israel and in Jerusalem um, with the Palestinians and yeah, that stuff happens. But then the, you know, at Gaza strip, all, the, all that stuff happens, but it's how Israel is set up. It's so separated from, 
you know, what the rest you know, of the it's world. Like, it's like a different country almost. Like I'm not, I can't go to Gaza. Uh, like you can't really go to Gaza. You can't go to East Jerusalem and those in like the conflict areas and the settlements. Um, so yeah, those things happen and that's how it's portrayed in, in media. But I get upset when people are like, oh, they portray it wrong. It's like, no, I mean, they just, they're not going to show me eating regular people going to a hummus <laughs> spot, you know, like showing regular <laughs> Israel. Nobody cares about regular <laughs> Israel on the news. So why would they show that? Why would you get that part of Israel? You have to go research that for yourself. So you're to be rely on the uh, news stories to portray a single country is just nonsense. Um, but yeah, there's definitely great parts of Israel and there's parts that you don't want to go to. So, you know, do your research and make up your own mind. That's my message. Yeah, that would, that would be good. CNN, CNN goes, uh, coming to you live, uh, <laughs> Stu Douglas shares how awful yeah. I got, pizza uh, is in Israel. I got uh, Wolf Blitzer sticking a camera, uh, a microphone in my face like, <laughs> how's the chickpea quality here? Wolf, get out of my face. That's not happening. So, yeah. <laughs> Uh, no, I, I would agree with you on that. The the American, you know, the, I feel like Americans perceive it to be super unsafe because they see the bombings and right. Uh, but then you go over there and it, it's odd too with everything going on with this in America with guns. Yeah, I'm uh, way like I'm way more in danger. Guns. Yeah, I'm way more in danger in America than I am. Yeah, yeah, in Israel. Um, it's just, it is really a different world. They got like 17 year olds walking around with AK 47s. Like, uh, and, but th that's like the last thing on your mind. <laughs> no, for sure. I mean, you see it, it uh, you get used to it after a couple weeks. Um, but I mean, we, if you wanted to turn it political, we could get into a gun debate or gun control, uh, uh, session about Israel. Yeah. I've seen people talk about the uh, kids carrying their weapons home from the army and stuff. Um, but there's a discipline there with it that people don't Huge, want to talk yeah. about. Yeah. And then afterwards you don't, you don't keep that gun. You give it right back. So yeah, yeah it's, a, it's a whole be, ordeal. Yeah. I mean like the 18 year old will be like falling asleep on the bus, like holding an AK 47 in his lap <laughs> <laughs> all the time, all the time. But like they, everyone's just so familiar with handling guns there. It's like, it's, I don't know. It, it's definitely a, a completely different society. So that could be a whole nother podcast, but. Oh yeah, for sure. We can go in. You want to take another 30 minutes? We could. <laughs> <laughs> no, next, next episode. Next episode. Okay. That's fa fair enough. <laughs> All right. Stu, uh, appreciate the time. No problem. Um, and uh, a, a quick shout out again. Uh, what was that? What was that Twitter handle? S W D. Underscore three one seven, representing Indy right there. There we go. Um, and he he uh, he plays basketball in Israel, but he, he mostly uh, tweets about you know sports and uh, oh yeah NBA, guess, a lot of big, sports, Big Ten basketball, big ten. <laughs> much much more. All my uh, gripes and <laughs> everything I can want to complain about that Courtney doesn't want to hear, so I just put it on Twitter. Yeah, that's a that, that's a good outlet. Yeah, so you don't get it's, divorced. It's therapy. That's what it's for. <laughs> All right, Sue. Thanks again. No problem. I'll talk to you soon. Sounds good. Thanks, Josh.